All right, problem three, we got this cool function here. G, man, it's defined on this closed interval from negative four to eight, has these two linear pieces and the semicircle. And we have the other function F defined as this expression, three X plus an integral from zero to X of G of T dt. We gotta find F of seven and F prime of seven. F of seven. All right, so f of seven is simply found by just plugging seven in for x into this. You get three times seven plus the integral from zero to seven of g of t dt, which is 21 plus, and then we look at the integral of g of t from zero to seven. So if going from here, we got this semicircle. which, you know, the area of a circle is pi r squared. For the semicircle, this will be pi r squared over two. This has a radius of three. So it will be pi times three squared over two. And since it's negative, whoops, I should have been since it's negative, negative, <laughs> negative pi times three squared over two. So let me write that out. So negative pi times three squared over two plus, we're going up to seven, it says. So then it'd be the area bounded underneath this, like this rectangle here. And that would be three. So that plus three would be, let's see, 21 plus three, 24, 24 minus nine pi over two. Right now, F prime of seven. That would be the derivative of this, which will be three the derivative of three X is just three, so we don't even need the X. Plus, since you're differentiating an, integ an integral, the integral symbol basically just goes away, so you're just taking G of seven. So looking at the graph, G of seven would be, coincidentally, it's three as well, because at, at this point, we got seven, three. So this will be three plus three, so just be six. All right, part B, find the value of X in the closed interval negative four to three at which the value or which the function F attains its maximum value. Justify your answer. Okay, so um, from negative four to three, so we're looking at from here to here. Now let's think about how F is related to this graph of G. So when we're looking at like how we find a max or a minimum, if you remember from like um, the optimization chapter, we want to study the derivative and find where the derivative, you know, goes from positive to negative when it goes from like, you know, you, you have a max at like, you know, something like that. On this case, the derivative is positive. On this side, the derivative is negative. So let's study the derivative first. So the derivative, of that is just three plus g of x, like we did in part a. And then we have to find critical values of the derivative and where it's undefined. Whoops, so we wanna find where f prime of x is zero and where it's undefined, and let's make sure we check the endpoints. So f prime of x is zero, let's see where it would be zero at, Over here. And where else would it be? We're only going to, um, we're, only, we're stopping here. Let's remember from negative four to three. 
So we have nowhere else really. We got to check um. We let's just check the endpoints to make sure. So um. When x is three. Whoops, x is three. And let's see what f prime of four is. Or sorry, f prime of negative four. Which is like negative one half, or just it's negative, we know. This is right negative because we can't say for sure. Whoops. Keep on moving the screen. Now, um, I I kind of overthought. I kind of went even further in this. We we just have to look at this, to be honest. Um, so actually, I'm just gonna write it in words. So let me just, let me just write, let me explain and write it in words because I don't want to keep on writing more unnecessary work. So the idea is this: for f prime of x, we want to see like where it would go from um, positive to negative. If we can find where it goes from positive to negative in that interval, then there will be a local max. Now, um, if it never, if it just goes, if it just, if it just stays positive the whole time, then it would just be at the end point because it's it's always increasing. Um, if it's you know always negative, then it'll be at the other end point. So we want to see what's going on. So um, since f prime of x is three plus g of x, let's see. Let's look at this graph right here. So three plus g of x. Remember, this is um, this graph is g of x. So from negative four to three, three g of x would be then starting g of g of four would be the like two. So here g of you know g of negative four is two. You no, know, here it's one. Here it's zero. And the lowest g of x ever gets is over here. Um, it gets to negative three. So the lowest g of x ever gets, I mean the lowest f prime of x ever gets on the interval negative four to three is zero. f prime of x is always greater than or equal to zero on this interval on negative four to three. F prime of x is always, you know, at least zero on this. So that means it's always increasing um, until, you know, very end, but then it's always getting bigger. So that means it's going to get, it's going to meet, reach its max at the end point at three. To reach its max value at x equals three. Because again, it's it's just it don't they don't get misled by this. It's 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 growing, 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 it's growing up to here. The value reaches its max over here. Sorry for like mixing that up with that unnecessary work at the beginning. All right, part C. Find each of the limits g prime of x when x approaches zero from the negative sign, and g prime of x when x approaches zero from the positive side. So let's look. Whoops, jump ahead. Jump ahead. So um, let's look at the, again, let's focus at zero. When we're coming from this direction, where d prime of x is the slope of this line. The slope of this line is we're going down one to the right two, down one to the right two, the slope here is negative one half. Now, when you're coming from the positive side towards zero, you see it goes along this, you know, curve, you know, circle, and eventually becomes a vertical line, so it becomes und an undefined slope. And so the left-hand limit is negative one half, and the right-hand limit is undefined. We'll write the limit of g prime of x as x approaches zero from the left is negative one half. And the limit of g prime of x as x approaches zero from the right is undefined. D, find 
the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x plus 7 over e to the 3x plus 6 minus 1. OK, so remember, always first try direct substitution. But you know you would get f of negative 2 plus 7 over 3 to negative 6 plus 6, so e to the 0 minus 1. So you get 0 on the bottom because you get 1 minus 1. f of negative 2, I'm going to assume, is 7. So f of negative 2 would be 3 times negative 2. Let's do the work over here. 3 times negative 2, so negative 6, plus the integral from 0 to negative 2 of g of t dt. So the integral from 0 to negative 2, so going backwards, this you know, little triangle here. From zero to negative two. So instead of it, so it would be positive. Um, so the area of that triangle is positive one, but since we're going in reverse, this becomes negative one. So this becomes negative six minus a negative one, which is then going to be a positive. Or I'm sorry, plus a negative one. Plus a negative one, not positive, but a negative seven. So going back to part D, yep, what do we get? We get negative seven plus seven, which is zero over zero, which is undefined or in a determinate form. So yeah, we gotta, we gotta go ahead and use L'Hopital's rule, El Hospital to the rescue. And that's essentially where you take the derivative of the top and divide it by the derivative of the bottom, then plug that number back in and see what happens. So let's take the derivative once. On top, we'll get f prime of x, the 7 goes away. The derivative on the bottom will just be 3 e to the 3x plus 6. That minus 1 goes away. And let's plug in now again negative 2 for x. So f prime of negative 2 over 3 times e to the negative 2 plus 6, so 3 times e to the 0 again. So three times one, so three. F prime of negative two. I think we have that already, right? In a, in a different part. No, we had we had F prime of seven. But um let's find F prime of negative two would just be three times, or just three, because that's x goes away, three plus that integral goes away because you're differentiating. So three plus g of negative two. g of negative two is just one. It's just the value of this graph at negative two. So this becomes three plus one. Whoops, becomes three plus one. Value of g of negative two is one. And so then f prime of negative 2 is 4. So from back to part D, we get 4 over 3, and we're done. 4 thirds. There we go. That's our answer. So hope that helps. Good luck, and let me know if you've got any questions or comments.